Good evening and welcome to Vespers at Charter House. This is our service of evening prayer and I welcome you and everybody with you to this service in the chapel at Charter House. You are also invited to join us in person if you wish on Sunday afternoon at four. And we, are, we love having you in the chapel. And if you need to be at home for some reason, you are very welcome as we share in fellowship for evening prayer. I would like to at this time uh, introduce the fact that it is Pentecost and this is the third Sunday of Pentecost where we hear Jesus teaching in Mark chapter four. And he's teaching us a parable of the kingdom about the planting, the seed, and the growth of the kingdom of God. Please join me in prayer. Let us pray. O oh God, you are the tree of life, offering shelter to all the world. Graft us into yourself, we pray, and nurture our growth, that we may bear your truth and love to those in need. We pray through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Hear the word of God in Psalm 92. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praises to your name, O Most High, to declare your steadfast love in the morning and your faithfulness by night, to the music of the lute and the harp, to the melody of the lyre, for you, O Lord, have made me glad by your work. At the works of your hands I sing for joy. The righteous flourish like a palm tree and grow like the cedar in Lebanon. They are planted in the house of the Lord. They flourish in the courts of our God. In old age they still produce fruit. They are always green and full of sap, showing that the Lord is upright. He is my rock, and there is no unrighteousness in him. Let us pray. Creator God, you have planted your word in our hearts that you might gather the harvest of justice. Root us so firmly in your love that we may always flourish, yielding the fruits of the Spirit from youth to old age, we pray through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, chapter 4. Jesus also said, The kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces of itself, first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle because the harvest has come. Jesus also said, with what can we compare the kingdom of God or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which when sown upon the ground is the smallest of all seeds on earth, yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With many such parables, Jesus spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables but he explained everything in private to his disciples. Here ends the gospel reading. Today for the sermon, I'd like first to show you a rose, a flower. This is the rose that some feel that it's the queen of flowers. It's beautiful. And this is the seed the rose seed. But many people ask me, where does the rose seed come from? Well, that's because we focus so much on this beautiful flower 
that we don't even think about the seed of the rose. Under the flower is a receptacle, underneath, right under here. And if a bee comes along and pollinates this flower, in time the petals will fall and the receptacle will swell and it will turn into a rose hip. This is a rose hip and it will be right under here like this. It is the fruit of the rose, the rose hip. It can be large and black like this or it can be a small one like that. It's a rose hip. Here's another one. You can see the stem of the flower and then the rose hip. Underneath where the receptacle forms, the rose hip forms, and if you open up the rose hip like this, inside it are the seeds of the rose. And I'm hoping that, that Melinda can show my hand here with the seeds of the rose inside the, the rose hip. There's the seed. I've just opened this rose hip. And there's the seed. A rose seed is so hard because the seed coat is, after all, made of rosewood. And it doesn't have to germinate every year like a tomato. It can wait for years and years and then germinate. An example of this is that rose hybridizers often will keep flats of rose seeds for seven years in hopes that a seed will germinate. Seven years they wait, and many rose seeds have been found that are decades, even hundreds of years old, that are viable. Only God knows what makes a rose seed germinate. And God understands we have tried everything to try to make that happen, and we just cannot do it. It's just a mystery. Last winter, 2020, I returned from visiting my daughter in Greece, just in time for the pandemic lockdown. Winter of 2020. I had been staying in the monastery on the mountain in the north part of that country near Mount Olympus. The nuns there have one of the seed savers center for Europe. And they provide seeds daily to people all over the world. And they gave me seeds of their roses. One rose bush grows near the guest house at the monastery. It's about six feet tall by four feet wide. And of the 158 seeds that I received from this rose, which I planted last February upon return to Minnesota, one seed germinated on May 26th, 2021, this May. It is a baby rose, one of the most beautiful endearing sights in all creation. It is now on the west side of my apartment in the best spot for sunlight, receiving all of my tender love and care in this heat wave. Since it is native to the mountains of Greece, I am confident that it will probably survive there. All during the pandemic year, the seed waited until now. The moment came to germinate and rise up above the dirt. Seeds and planting, mystery and growth, the time of fruit and harvest, the ways of God, Jesus opens his heart to us in Mark 4 to show us the kingdom of God by telling about seeds and planting. There is a break here. There is a mystery that we cannot see. The seed rests in the darkness. Jesus said it comes up and grows we know not how. Like Jesus himself, we're in the tomb, we're in the darkness of Holy Saturday. Something happened that we could not see. It was resurrection. We didn't witness it. We nurture the results of the mystery, but we didn't make it happen. Such is the story of our dear inward nature, each one of us. Here in our hearts is a small space hidden in darkness with 
aorta and heart valves and oxygen rushing in the blood like a river within, finding each cell. And touching this inward space, Jesus tells us that all is well in the mystery of our God. God is at work to bring about life and wholeness, integrity and peace. Just like the parable itself, the kingdom may be hidden from those unaware of its secret presence, but it is also destined to be revealed in fullness, all of its fullness, and to produce a harvest. Is that boring, that first parable in Mark 4? Not for people who are afraid, it's not boring. Not for people who face death, not for us. Here at Charterhouse, we are blessed with decades of life to consider, to question, and to hope. We are given precious opportunities each day to build relationships, friendships, to have spiritual fathers and mothers and sisters and brothers, daughters and sons around us who are spiritual people who are growing. It is our blessing to offer loving kindness and to give ourselves to each other in community. This is humble, but it is no small matter, this humble work. We, dear friends, can be the pot, the soil, the place where the seed of the kingdom of God is placed. Humbly we wait. We watch for signs of God's love coming to fruition. For such it will be, Jesus tells us. Our lives will surely show the fruit of God's efforts as we clear away the weeds of sin and distraction from our lives. I love growing the old garden roses. Right now there are three species roses growing at my place, including that one baby rose native to the mountain in Greece. I love watching for the roses to flower and I love giving them away. I even love making like a bee and making my own crosses to get hybrid seed. Certainly I'll keep you posted about the little Greek rose. And if it flowers, I promise to bring one in to show you. But you and I don't have to be a gardener to tend the seeds of God's kingdom. You have only to pray, to love, and to bless others. We only have to lift our hearts and minds to praise the Lord of life, to be part of his kingdom. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us share a time of prayer and close with the Lord's Prayer using the word sins and sin in the Lord's Prayer. But first let us share the prayers of evening. Let us pray. Be present, merciful God, and protect us through the hours of this night so that we who are wearied by the changes and chances of life may find our rest in you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. O Lord, support us all the day long of this troubled life until the shadows lengthen and the evening comes and the busy world is hushed. The fever of life is over and our work is done. Then, Lord, in your mercy, grant us a safe lodging and a holy rest and peace at the last through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Hear our prayer, O Lord, and listen to our cry. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. In righteousness I shall see you. When I awake, your presence will give me joy. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the day, especially for the good we were permitted to give and to receive. The day is now past and we commit it to you. 
We entrust to you the night. We rest securely for you are our help and you neither slumber nor sleep. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Dear Lord, please bless all who take shelter in Charter House. Strengthen us and give us your peace so that we may be a blessing to our community and world. Make your fellowship here at Charter House be very strong and hearty, full of peace and forgiveness, full of grace and joy, full of celebration and laughter, as well as of the tears that we share. We pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. It has been so good to share this time of Vespers with you. And remember the mystery of the seed of the kingdom of God. Remember to tend each other with love and kindness. Now I invite you to receive the benediction. May our glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and love the risen Christ the God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and always. Amen.